a Stuart 10V steam engine rebuild. This is part three, using a whetstone to clean up the castings, drilling out the broken thread in the valve fork, and re-threading the original valve spindle, 5BA. The first job in this episode is to clean up the castings. In this clip you can clearly see that the steam chest cover casting has not been cleaned up properly. This part of the engine is the first thing that you see, with the letter S on it. And I will be painting this area with some buffer beam red in due course, but not yet. I need to clean up the casting first. I'm going to clean up certain areas of these castings using the whetstone, because it's the best way to do it. Normally I would use wet or dry sandpaper on a piece of steel plate, but then you have to hold the sandpaper in position. With a whetstone it holds itself in position, as it is indeed a piece of stone. It may be a synthetic product, I'm not really sure how they are made, but it really does the job, but you do need some oil to make it cut properly. And here I'm using some 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil. Not too much, just enough. It will eventually spread out all over the stone. This job does look to be a bit tedious, and indeed you need some patience. The whole process takes quite a while to complete, but the results at the end should be good. I find myself frequently looking at the part that I'm working on, just to check the general improvement, and usually in between glancing at the part there hasn't been much improvement, but after a while it starts to get better. The video clip that you've just been watching was running at 400%, and for these sequences I will continue to speed them up. This one's running at 200%. In this clip I'm cleaning the edges of the steam chest itself as well as the front and rear surfaces of the steam chest. When I wipe away the oil residue from the steam chest cover, you can definitely see there is a big improvement, but it needs a bit more work yet. At this point I was getting a bit fed up, so I went and made a cup of tea, but I did come back to the job and complete it. I also thoroughly cleaned up the port face of the cylinder block. This wasn't in particularly bad condition, but now it's perfect. I also cleaned up each end of the cylinder. My problem is I get bored with things very easily, so I tend to jump about between the different procedures in any given video. In this part of the clip I'm working once again on the front face of the steam chest cover. I've been doing this for such a long time, even the oil is starting to dry up, and as you can see there's much more of a grey black residue on the stone. I think that will do, enough wet stoning for the moment. A pair of gaskets arrived with the engine, they are pre-punched and all you need to do is remove the parts you don't need. I can't really clean up the cylinder covers using the wet stone, I'll use the lathe for this job. The only part of these covers that needs cleaning is the outer part of the top cylinder cover. This is a bit of a problem. The exhaust hole's in the wrong place, and it's too close to the inlet. The small hole for the exhaust is 2BA, or so my calibrated eye told me. I verified this by screwing in a 2BA tap, which went in without any friction whatsoever. I'll leave the steam chest this way around for the time being, but I really am hoping I'll be able to successfully reverse it. In this clip, after the whetstone treatment, you can clearly see how much better the front surface of the steam chest cover looks. The cylinder bore is very clean and very well machined. This engine has done a bit of running in its time because the piston is worn, but that's not a bad thing. I'm going to fit a silicone o-ring to the piston, and you need the piston not to be a tight fit in the bore, so the oil can get through to the o-ring. More about this in a future episode. What I'm going to do at the moment is drill out the broken part of the valve spindle that is stuck in the valve fork. First of all though, it's top tip time. I'm using a piece of brass tube in the machine vise on this very small Proxon drill stand. This piece of tube in the slot of the valve fork helps to hold it in place while I drill the end of it. I know it doesn't look straight, but it is. The top of the valve fork was never machined perfectly flat. What I'm doing is using a very small drill in this Proxon Minimot motor tool. I do like to use small tools that are not too powerful for small jobs. If you use a powerful drilling machine, that will snap off the drill with the least provocation, 
I used three drill bits, a very small one, a medium sized small one, and finally a tapping sized drill bit for 5BA. In this box are three types of 5BA tap, a taper, second and plug. I'm going to use the taper tap, and I'm going to use the taper tap in the drilling machine to make sure that the hole in the center is fully aligned with the tap. After tapping the hole part of the way through, I remove the machine vise from the drilling machine and finish the job off by hand using a tap wrench. And now as you can see here, there is a perfect 5BA thread in the brass. Now I need to cut a 5BA thread down part of the valve spindle. I don't need much of a thread, it doesn't need to be too long. And for this I'm using a standard die holder. A quick word about setting up dies in die holders. Generally I would fit the die into the holder and then tighten the middle screw, not too tight, but just enough to spread the die slightly. Then I tighten up the outer ones to hold it in place. By doing this you do not get a thread that is undersized. If you tighten the outer bolts first, that compresses the die and you will usually end up with a thread that is undersized. How do I know this? I've never read it in a book, I've never had any engineering training, but to me it just seems to be like common sense. That's why it's a split die, so you can make adjustments. It's very important to make sure that the die is perfectly at 90 degrees to the work, and I'm using the tailstock chuck to keep it in line. I'm not putting much pressure on it, just keeping my eye on it. By turning the chuck in reverse, I'm removing the die stock and I end up with a very short thread on the end of the valve spindle. This is about right. To finish the job, all I need to do now is apply some Loctite 603 retaining compound to the thread and screw the brass valve fork in place. For this I'm using my trusty Barco spanner to make sure it's tight, and believe me, with the help of the Loctite 603, I don't think this is going to fall off anytime soon. This is a needle file and I'm going to use this needle file to file out the valve fork because it's far too tight to fit on the eccentric rod. In actual fact I filed the valve fork and the end of the eccentric rod and now they fit together perfectly. Prior to this both of these parts were far too tight. I've loosely assembled this part of the engine and as you can see the eccentric rod is a perfect fit in the valve fork, it slides back and forth, it's not tight at all. And that concludes this episode, all I have to say as usual is stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.